And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where exploits run wild and packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the beer flows steady, it's Paul's Security Weekly! This segment sponsored by Palo Alto Networks creators of the next generation firewalls, helping you enforce network security policies based on applications, users, and content. Visit them on the web at paloaltonetworks.com. And by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit sans.org to learn more. It's now time to fire up a packet capture and pour yourself a beer. Turn your botnet over to the intern, because here's your host. He's a man who covers his butthole and makes sure his fly is up when Dave Kennedy's in the house. Paul Asadorian! Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Security Weekly. I am your host, Paul Asadorian. This is episode 384 for Thursday, August 21st, 2014. Um, wanted to mention first the PVS contest from Tenable. You can register by clicking the link in the show notes. Enter to win an AR drone. You must use PVS to find something cool, and the details are on the registration page. Uh, join me for an awesome webcast titled Five Things You're Not Doing With Your Vulnerability Scanner. I promise to keep it real, have ridiculous pictures in the pre presentation, and show you how to stay regular with your vulnerability scanner, of course. Mm -hmm. That registration link is also in the show notes. Um, SANS Las Vegas, October 26th through the 27th, will debut our new course, Embedded Device Security Assessments for the Rest of Us, which would teach students how to assess embedded systems on varieties uh, systems on all varieties of pen tests or your duties as a security professional. You can register, again, with the link in the show notes or go to securityweekly.com forward slash IOT for Internet of Things, which we're going to talk about during our story segment. Yes. Larry is teaching at that same conference, Wireless Ethical Hacking, Penetration Testing, and Defense, October 20th through the 25th. Woo that registration link is in the show notes. Stay tuned for the end of the show for a discount code for embedded device security assessments for the rest of us. You should definitely take that course and Larry's course all at the same time. Yes. We're leaving John out of that equation because I think John might be teaching <laughs> overlapping with us, but take our classes. Well, maybe if you already took John John's classes or vice versa. Right, right, because it's a good chance that you took 560. You want to be at that conference, though, because we're all going to be there, you and you, you should, too. And that's the b one of the big ones for the year. So It is, yeah. yeah. And it's in Vegas, because, you know, we haven't gotten enough of Vegas. Vegas, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's funny. I well, now that I found say Frankie's, Frankie's say, yeah, say hi room. to Say hi to Mello and Mike and Allie and Chris. and Frankie's Tiki Room is freaking awesome, man. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. All right, if only someone had been saying this since for, like, like a week after they freaking opened If only someone would have told me for the past seven Listen, years. Listen, this is all I wow. got to say. Now that everybody knows about Frankie's. <laughs> Forget it. If you see me walk in, clear a path to the bar. <laughs> yes, because Jack is, that's Jack's bar. Um, it actually, yeah, it should be called Jack's Tiki Room. <laughs> yeah, well, may, know, maybe uh, during the stories we'll talk about who I hosted there. That yes. Week. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be I, uh, awesome. Because <laughs> I was just going to say, you know what would only make Frankie's Tiki Room more awesome? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Because <laughs> well, my my Vegas hangout kind of went south on me. The Casa Fuente just isn't the same. Really? They're, they're doing not construction. What it, it's not uh, what it outside oh. area yeah, is only it's like it's one. It's, it's not. Also, they space. moved to uh, Black Hat's not at at Caesars, Caesars anymore. anymore. Yeah, it changed the whole and dynamic. Mandalay's not right. Changed know? the whole dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Now the one thing I will say is that the move get off for my DefCon to uh, Paris, to Paris, 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 and Paris and Bally's means that. Um, the Cosmopolitan, Vidara, and Aria are right across the street. Wow. So we're going to be spread across a lot. Well, no. The only reason why I say that is because maybe I'll stay there next year only because that those three hotels are the large, world's largest Zigbee installation. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. Oh, yeah. And, and around the corner is uh, Tuscany Suites and Casino yes. where B-Sides will be again next year. Yes. On the 4th and 5th, our room block is actually already open because we're... Because you're good We're like deep that. in planning for uh, next year. Cool. Nice. 
I'd like to introduce our first guest of this evening. Sarah Edwards is with us. Sarah is a senior digital forensic analyst who has worked with uh, various federal law enforcement agencies. She's performed a variety of investigations, including computer intrusions, criminal counterintelligence, counter-narcotic, and counter-terrorism. Uh, she is the instructor for the SANS new Mac Forensic Analysis course, Forensics 518. Welcome, Sarah, to the show. Hi, thank you very much. I see you wearing your Apple shirt. Very nice. Very it, nice. You know, yeah. I have to I have to give props out to the Apple folks, right? At least what, two of the three of you. What were you saying about Apple products before the show, Jack? <laughs> I, everybody thinks I hate Apple products. I do not. They hate me. Okay. Well, <laughs> fair enough. So, nice. Sarah, how did you get your start in uh, information security and forensics? Um, it goes all the way back to college. Um, at Back then, there was this point where uh, forensics was not in any program. It was, okay, you know, you got a little bit of security, you got some networking, you got database stuff, but there's really no forensics. And senior year in college, I'm like, you know what? I really want to do this thing called forensics. So finally, in the, like, the last quarter that I was there, I had to, um, they finally introduced a forensics course. I took it. Uh, I've been basically trying to work it in my entire college career um, and Right out of college, I got my first job in forensics, uh, working for federal law enforcement as a contractor, nice. and I've been doing it ever since. Awesome. So, tell us about some of the um, cases that you worked on that you can, you know, talk about. I'm sure you've got some stories. Whether you can share them or not, it's probably up for debate, right? Uh, no. None. Uh, Nothing. You can't give I've us done, anything. I've, I've done some cool stuff and things. That's all yeah, I can yeah. say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, I've I've worked on some uh, I've worked on some pretty cool stuff uh, stuff people would actually recognize on the news. Um, I've had an extremely good opportunity where I currently am um, to work on some really interesting things. I gotcha. Uh, yeah. Now you've spoken at some conferences like ShmooCon and B sides. What are some mm -hmm. of the uh, presentations you've given at those conferences? Uh, so I probably have. A few presentations. Uh, my most recent one, I spoke at uh, DEF CON B sides this last year, uh, B sides Las Vegas, uh, was uh, reverse engineering Mac malware. And that has actually been turned out to be more popular than I thought it might be. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it was this you know, niche topic that somebody might find so sort of interesting here and there. Because, uh, you know, Macs don't get hacked. That's so. right. Macs don't get viruses. Wait, so why do you reverse <laughs> engineering malware that doesn't exist? Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, so a couple a, other presentations really I've job. done is uh, a lot of Mac log analysis and correlation. Uh, that gets really in-depth to Mac log analysis for all the, the, the big log nerds out there. I'm a big log nerd. I feel free to admit that. Um, done some iOS stuff. Um, basically anything Mac-related because I, I think gotcha. it's really a topic that needs to be covered, and I'm willing to cover it. Okay. Carlos, are you there? Excuse yep, me, I'm here. Hey, hey, hola, Carlos. Welcome to the show. Speaking of course, of did I forget to introduce everyone again? Yep, we need to <laughs> yes. put that in the show notes. Oh, God. Well, Larry is here with us. Sorry, Sarah, for derailing the interview. Larry's no here with us, Yay. as well as Jack. What? Where? What? what? Uh, the confused old person. Uh, yes. Uh, and Get Carlos. Off my lawn. <laughs> Carlos <laughs> is on the line via Skype. Uh, Carlos, did you have questions for Sarah? I know you're kind of a big kind of Mac kind of person. Um, did you have questions along the lines related to forensics? I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Well, not many. I, I, I think she and I had a couple of nice chats when she was at uh, Besides Puerto Rico and we were talking about it. Um, I, I think so far uh, it, it kind of boiled down to that uh, – Okay, let, let me ask the same question I asked her over there at B sites is what was your process for going and finding all of the tools that you have in your presentation? I remember uh, when you did the presentation at B sites and you were going through all the tools that I was going like, huh, I haven't seen that tool before. Huh, that tool is cool. I didn't know that Mac OS had that one. What was your process on finding these tools and kind of documenting all of that? So so besides Puerto Rico, awesome conference, great location. <laughs> it's one of the, the greatest places I've ever been to that I could still spend the American dollar. Um, so I did a lot of research on it. Um, there are some other folks out there in the, the very niche topic of reverse engineering Mac malware. And these guys are far more hardcore than I am. 
um, and doing some really in-depth static analysis. Um, there's OSX Reverser on Twitter. There's, um, uh, what's the name? I think Jonathan Levin, um, author of the Mac Internals book, the new one. Um, so they've actually had a bunch of resources that I've sort of compiled together. Uh, a lot of the other tools and stuff, a lot of the, um, say, D-Trace stuff, a lot of the um, um, other scripts and tools basically came from just online research and be like, okay, I know how to do this doing ma Windows malware analysis. How can I get the same functionality doing Mac analysis? Because SysInternals does not, is not even existent for, for Mac, of course. Um, so, and I know a lot of reverse engineers or um, malware analysts use those tools. So I wanted to find some stuff. So I really just sat down and said, hey, I need to find this artifact. What tools are available? And most of them are available on um, native OS, OS 10 installs. So that's really great. Technically free with Mac, purchase of Mac. So I, conceptually, is it easier for attackers to hide malware on an OS 10 system than Windows or is it about the same or just different? It, in my experience, uh, Mac, Mac malware is not as advanced as Windows malware is today, so I don't think it hides as well. Mm -hmm. um, Yay, Windows! I like, I like to say that, you know, Mac malware is about 10 to 15 years behind Windows malware. I got it's, you. It's, it's not advanced in most cases. Is that At least it none of the publicly <laughs> available stuff is. Is that because it doesn't have to be? Uh, probably not. I don't think people are really looking for it. Yeah. So it doesn't have to go to great lengths to hide. No. Because it, what, I mean, it, it just needs uh, you to get the click on this one thing to install tools, itself. Right? Also, one of the things I noticed was, for example, FinFisher and some of the other commercial malware, uh, if you want to call it that, or commercial rats, that you can buy from uh, for a sin are quite limited, mm -hmm. even when you have a budget dedicated to it. Um, what was I going to say? I I had a follow-up question to that, and now I, I totally lost it because I decided to look at Twitter briefly while Carlos was asking the question. I shouldn't be doing that. Um, so as far as uh, Mac antivirus tools or any kind of endpoint protection, are there recommendations that you have? Should you not bother? Are there other tools uh, that are free? I know Carlos mentioned you covered a lot of tools in your, your presentations. So I looked at more of analysis tools versus AV products. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of research into Mac AV products as of now. Um, to be honest, I don't even run it myself other mm -hmm. than the, um, the X-Protect that Mac OS X is built in with. Um, so to be honest, I have no idea. I know there's a study out there. I think if you do like a Google search for um, you know effectiveness of Mac AV products, some and I wish I could remember because it's a really good uh, presentation that was put together on the effectiveness of known Mac malware against these AV tools. And some of them are pretty awful, which is, you know, normal with any type of malware, really. Uh, but some are better than others. Mm -hmm. um, the different versions of the OS X operating system drive me insane. <laughs> And Forensically, they drive me insane, too. Yeah, I was going to say, you must have the same challenges, right? So when I was yes. writing for the command line Kung Fu blog, I try and translate some of the Unix commands into OS X, <laughs> and you start running into these like huge problems. And it was taking me, like, it would have taken me days to figure out how to do it on all the different platforms. And, yeah. you know, like, for example, as you well know, right, the way they store user accounts and passwords like vary so greatly across all of those different um, mm -hmm. versions of the OS. Uh, how have you kind of dealt with that? Is there a guide? Is there you know tips that you have? <laughs> so when I was writing the SANS course, I uh, I basically had VMs for each individual operating system. You know, ten seven, ten eight, ten nine. I'm um, basically comparing each individual artifact and noting that within the the course notes for the most part. And hopefully, I'll remember to say it in class when I present it. But um, yeah, Apple likes to tweak mm. almost, definitely almost every dot release, but maybe even even sub releases. They'll tweak mm -hmm. the, the littlest thing in a P list or a key here or an artifact here. And like, yeah, the, uh, the password thing, it's changing from 10.5 to 10.6 to 10.7 to 10.8, though I think it's the same in 10.9. So, you know, well, hey, there's good. that. They've, They've kept learning. one thing. Yeah. Um, 
uh, <coughs> are there a lot of changes? I mean, not just in usernames and passwords, but also like file systems. I'm sure have changed over releases too. The, the file system. In and of itself, HFS Plus has not changed. Um, there are some artifacts that have been added to it. Mm -hmm. um, one of my, the banes of my existence was documenting the HFS Plus file system for the course. I bet. Uh, which, which we go into pretty in depth. I was going to say, that's probably a big deal in your class, right? Being a forensics course. Yeah. Um, and it's not really covered in depth in a whole lot of other places. So uh, I had to... T I had to uh, look at uh, the source for the sleuth kit. I had to look for at the uh, the documentation that Apple put out many years ago that's now deprecated. Mm -hmm. um, there are things in that that literally say for future for future use that are now that have been implemented since then. Mm -hmm. So I had to go within the file system and figure all that stuff out and where all these things are placed. So. And now, did you create your own tools to be <clears throat> able to analyze the file system, or are there free or off-the-shelf uh, products that do uh, analysis of the file system? No, I mean, any, most every forensic tool, at least modern forensic tool, is able to support HFS+, Plus, which is nice, uh, to various extents. Mm -hmm. um, I ha in the course, we do use uh, SleuthKit. Uh, mm -hmm. We do use, um, the only things that I have created are, um, are um, what is it called, uh, grammars for um, uh, Synalyze It, which is a... Um, a hex editor. It's like a almost like O one O editor, but freer and cheaper mm -hmm. <laughs> in most cases. Uh, to be able to uh, highlight those data structures to make it easier for the student to parse the data, right? Without having to use a tool. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, are you giving your students like challenges? So do you give them a file system, and you're like, you got to go find this, you got to go find that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So what are the some and of the things? They probably hate me after. But probably. It's, Is, they make it uh, makes them a better person to know yeah. the file system. <laughs> So what are the, some of the things they have to go find? Uh, just different files, um, different <coughs> directories, you know, basic forensic stuff. Um, extended attributes are really used quite often in HFS and OS X systems. Um, so I have them looking at the attributes and finding a, uh, a particular attribute for a certain file and being able to correlate those two. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. Now, do you do any memory forensics uh, in your class? Yep, we do do a little bit of memory forensics. Um, fortunately, the volatility folks have put out some really nice stuff in their version uh, two three. There was official Mac support, and now two four just came out, and there's incredibly excellent support there too. Um, I'm actually going through the volatility book right now, and yeah, I we had those. I skipped ahead to the Mac section. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. We had, we had, the, we had, had those skip folks all on the way show. to the end, so I'm, I'm reviewing that right now. Awesome, awesome. But yeah, it's so good stuff. Good. Yeah, we had them on the show uh, a few weeks back, so mm -hmm. um, that's awesome. So you give the your students memory dumps and have them analyze them just the same way you would have, but similar yep. to how you would analyze a file system, right? Yep. Uh, very and cool. we have a challenge at the end of the course, like most of the forensics track, the, the last day is, uh, is a whole challenge. We have, mm -hmm. you know, many different systems. We have memory dumps, time machine, um, all sorts of good things, uh, um, encrypted containers and stuff like that. So we can use the, uh, the password cracking and things like that. Yep. So uh, yeah, cause the they, they, they solve your... something right at the end. And right, that's put cool. all the skills together. And, and the contents of your Mac can end up on Time Machine, which then mm -hmm. right can be synced to iCloud, right, and all that stuff. Uh, Time Machine is different than the iCloud stuff, but um, a, like, like your iOS, your your phone and stuff can be backed up to iCloud. But as far as I know, Time Machine disk host stuff is not quite synced. Okay. Um, you do have iCloud artifacts. I have a whole section on iCloud on the mm -hmm. on the, all the artifacts that are, you know, basically stored on every device everywhere. It's it gets scary. Um, it is kind of scary. Are, there were a couple of in in the first beta class. There was a couple of it does what? Wait, <laughs> what? Uh, a couple of oh shit moments. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so and that's and that's when I know I did a good job. <laughs> nice. So now um, with it being a Mac forensics course, do you cover some iOS stuff too, or do you leave that to the mobile? Yep. Um, absolutely. Uh, Heather uh, Heather Mahalik. Um, yep who does the other, the mobile phone course for SANS, and uh, Dominique Krangel, um actually put that uh, that day together. So that's one one out of six days that is uh, completely iOS. I gotcha. That's awesome. Yep. Um, so what are some of the things you do with iOS? I'm assuming if you were a forensics analyst, especially for a criminal investigation, you may have to bypass a passcode or something like that, right? 
Right. So we do talk about uh, a lot of the data protections and things like that. Um, you know, we don't give them any magical formula on how to bypass this. Mm -hmm. uh, some tools are able to bypass it. Uh, simple, simple passcode um, can brute force um, simple and complex passcodes. Fortunately, ever since 4S and iPad 2, it makes our forensic life hard when there is a passcode. Right. Uh, but and then they can encrypt their backups as well. Yeah, so there is encrypted backups on the host system. So uh, that that gives us a little bit more pain yep. of trying to get trying to extract the data from that. Yeah. What so? What are the tools? Are there, are there tools to in, extract um, the encrypted backups? That uh, are there there are today? tools that will um, um, what's it called? Uh, brute force or try to extract the password from the encrypted backup using various files on the host system. Mm -hmm. um, the Alchemsoft. Uh, what's it called? Uh, EPBB, the password breaker, mm -hmm. um, phone password breaker tool, um, interacts with that quite a bit. I gotcha. I gotcha. Cool. Now, with the keychain being synced between iOS and OS X, would it be easier just to approach attacking or getting access to the keychain information from OS X than actually going straight into iOS? Are you saying? To get the host keychain or the iOS keychain? Well, now, now, now you can actually, with iOS 7, you can sync your keychain between OS 10 and iOS. So your keychain can be kind of synced between them, at least for passwords for Safari. and uh, Right. Uh, they tend to be synced. With, uh, how difficult it is to get the keychain in OS 10 versus getting access, let's say, in iOS 7. I'd say it's probably easier to get it on the uh, the um, like the laptop or the uh, the desktop system versus the phone. I mean that once you get a newer phone that's password protected, you're pretty much SOL for the most in most cases. So I mean you can always just rip out the hard drive of a computer. And how strong is the keychain protection in in OS X itself? Um, I think it's pretty good. I forget the exact encryption scheme. Uh, but we do in the course we do break some keychains, <laughs> so it's not impossible to uh, brute force it. Excellent. Um, so, are you planning any uh, updates to the class other than updating for volatility uh, two point four? Um, there's updates constantly going. Apple keeps me on my toes. I bet. So I bet. Every minute of every day is updating that course. Hey, cool. a anything that kind of pops to mind, let's say with Yosemite, where you go like, hey, I felt did very well here. Uh, so I haven't even gotten a chance to uh, to really sit down and look at Yosemite. And I feel like not the fangirl that I should be saying that. I created <laughs> the VM. But uh, seriously, have not gotten a chance to uh, do the updates because I've been doing the updates for the uh, the Crystal City course in, uh, in uh, late September or mid-September, I guess. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a rolling thing. Um, at some point, I mean, 1010 is not even out yet, so I'm not completely worried that it's not in the course. With a new OS X system coming out every single year, mm. it's very tough to keep it updated. You, you, the Windows guys have it so much easier, I swear. Yeah. They do. <laughs> and, of course, Apple's uh, uh, inclination to always change things in the new OS makes that difficult. Yeah, I, I basically have to go through each page of my course and make sure that, yep, it's still like this in 1010, or nope, it's changed mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. So, but I, I do my best to try to keep things updated. I really do. So the, the, we're also getting, well, the rumor is we're getting a new iPhone in the fall. Can you confirm or deny that? Because I'm really looking to, to maybe if, upgrade. I wish I knew. <laughs> okay. If only I had the insider information. I might switch back depending on what they come out with. Um, we'll I, I'm kind of worried about it, to be honest. I really like the size of, I have the 5S. I really like the size of it. And I'm, all the rumors are saying it goes bigger. And I just, I don't want it. I, had, <laughs> I, I had don't to, want a giant I had phone. to go big. I'm on a Note 3 right now. So I, they, have, I, they have to compete with that. See, for me, that would be like um, talking on my giant iPad or something like that. It looks ridiculous. It does look ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but I am excited about that. Are we gonna see, you think we're going to get a new iOS on that? I mean, oh, absolutely. I think uh, too, iOS yeah. 8 will come out with it. I yeah. think that's like a done deal now. I gotcha. I gotcha. So you have to update your class again. Well, oh, that yeah. one day will have to be updated anyway, right? It, 
always. <laughs> it is in a continual state of update. Awesome. It, it won't be updated until I probably die. So. Um, so when is the class being offered next? So the next class, I think, is set in September. I want to say maybe second week of September. Is it? It's in Crystal City, which is Arlington, Virginia. Uh, the next course is in Seattle, um, in first week of October, and then in November we got Fort Lauderdale. Nice. Gotta go get some sun in November. I was so. gonna say, yeah, that's that's a nice yeah. place for it to be in November for sure. <laughs> and and no Vegas in October. Um, I don't think so at this point, because I think we're still trying to ramp up. Um, sure. Ramp up, ramp up production. Course. Ramp up production, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Taking it slow. Well, if you do, That's you're more than welcome to come to Frankie's Tiki Room with us. Just I've saying. not been. O- open invitation. <laughs> I'll have to make it. <laughs> Although uh, I'm pretty Vegas out after uh, the last yeah, couple of weeks. Yeah, aren't we all? So, yes. so Vegas, <laughs> the Vegas survival guide is get off the strip. That's it. Just get off the strip. That's how you survive Vegas. <laughs> and drink the ice from the ice machine after it melts. Yeah, check the filters first, but if it looks good, yes. <laughs> what? Ice is magical. Ice is magical. Um, oh, Do anyone have any question or more questions for Sarah? No, I think you guys a- answered all mine ones, and there was along the lines of what's significantly different from doing Mac forensics than opposed to traditional Windows or Linux forensics. And uh, we kind of covered that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, are you ready to play five questions with Security Weekly? Oh, my. Shh. Yeah, sure. Why Did not? they prep you for this? <laughs> no, actually, okay, they never good. told me about Okay, good. That's perfect. This. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, words, sure. three words to describe yourself. Mac fangirl. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? MacBook Air. It's sharp. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Uh, stories of a Mac Fangor f- girl forensic analyst. I don't know. I'm in, really uncreative. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Uh, s- second. If you could pick two celebrities to be your parents, who would they be? That's a tough one, I know. I'm sorry uh, about that. It does require some thought. I, I wish I was prepped on that one. I could have come up with something. <laughs> um, t- truly, I have no idea. All right, I we'll, can't even we'll come up with a name. If right you now. had superpowers, what would they be? Um, to know what other people are thinking. Especially Apple, so then you could predict the updates that are coming out for your class. Yes, exactly. That would make my life easier. <laughs> Although that might be kind of torture because hearing what's going on in their heads might be kind of <laughs> might be kind like, torture. No, don't no, do don't that. No, don't do that. I have, I have to change like 20 pages. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Sarah, thank you very much for appearing on Security Weekly. Um, thank you for having me. <laughs> Sarah's course is SANS Mac Forensics Analysis uh, Forensics 518. So you can uh, search the SAN site for that and find out where it's running next. Thanks again, Sarah. Thank you. And with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and wait for Dave Kennedy to get here. He's getting closer. Okay. So we'll keep you updated on that. In the meantime, we're just going to drink and be merry until Dave gets here. (laughs) We'll be right back.